Hello you guys and welcome back to a video um, on how to make this adorable whimsical magical crown and so I um, I actually bought this to kind of hang from a it's like a uh, it holds a candle but it, it's like a sconce but it stands off the wall a little bit it's vintage and so um, I'm gonna put this on there um, by the front I thought this was so cute um, so I wanted to go ahead and come on here and make one with you guys and um, this month's kit is about a um, magical forest and I thought a crown with all the fun things on it is perfect um, craft project so um, let's get started now on the next one I make I'm gonna kinda do my beads a little bit shorter because I'm gonna add it to my Christmas tree my white whimsical all year round Christmas tree that's in my art studio here so that's what I'm gonna do with this so that's what I'm gonna do, show you exactly how to do this but I'm gonna make mine just a little bit shorter so I can kinda make it into like an ornament now if you don't want the long uh, beads or even like a small short ornament these are adorable to sit on your desk I um, I even thought you could put like a votive in there and this is just another crown candle holder that I had but isn't that cute? So I thought that could be also another idea. I wouldn't put a real candle in there because I'm paranoid about real candles. <laughs> but I have a lot of those little votives that just are run on batteries. And so that would be perfect too. And how adorable would this be to put if you had a party and you could make one for each setting. So there's just so many endless little possibilities when you make these cute little crowns. And they are so simple. So let's get started. Now I kind of did a pre-cut on mine, but I wanted to show y'all exactly um, how I did it. So these are the pieces that I already pre-cut and painted. I, if you go to my blog, I have a um, just a small little template of these two items, and basically a supply list is included as well. But this is based. This is a length of an eight and a half by eleven, and I want to say, let's see here. Let's measure this. It's about, I would say, three quarters of an inch thick. So, excuse me, Mom. It's kind of early this morning, so my nose is waking up too. But so anyway, so I just cut that, and this is just a triangle that I eyeballed for. And that's the cool thing about this project too is you can make them as little or as big as you want. Now I used. You could use double-sided paper. This is. Um, actually that real thin one-sided paper that you get in a pack at Walmart so I went ahead and just kind of clip those together and I'm just and I cut the shape of the triangle out and what's interesting about cutting triangles is you have the exact same measurement on the other side once you um, once you cut it so you have you can make several at one time just by just by cutting them out so I just wanted to kind of show y'all what I did so this is, I put them together, and I'm, what I did on this one is um, I used dictionary paper and I used star paper because I kind of wanted it to be about writing and um, you could use hymnal paper. There's so many different possibilities. And I'll show you how I, I kind of diluted my uh, paint so that I could still see the pattern of the paper below. So once you get those cut out, you basically, I use just a general Elmer's glue. You can use any glue that you have. And I just, um, I always have like an extra sheet of paper here for my, so I don't get my work surface all sticky with glue. But I basically just put the glue on and stick the sides together. Very easy. Um, but like I said, if you used uh, double-sided paper, then you wouldn't have to really do this. Now, to get the bend, I actually, with that original one, I did a, um, I did a mix, I did a Mod Podge, but I think actually with this one, you can use, um, when I, when I add these little pipe cleaners on the edge here, they allow you to kind of bend and shape it. Uh, the other thing with using a Mod Podge as well, which we'll, we'll put a coat on, um, is it allows kind of it it kind of like uh, really adds that layer of protectiveness on there I feel like so that's one of the reasons um, I did that as well even though the paint kind of does it but I like 
just having that extra protection of and it allows you to kind of shape it while it's drying so we're going to get to that point and then i'm going to uh then we're going to have our crown rest and and dry and then i'll come back on in and finish up the project so we'll have a couple of stages here to getting the project complete so you get your strip and i i just basically i kind of left an over i guess so to speak i probably did like an inch and a half overage but let's just see here i'm going to put just a small amount on here and we're just going to test it out so i overlapped my crown a little bit and i'm just going to make sure i have enough spaces so i'm 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 thinking i do but i think i did five of them so And the other thing with using like a stick glue, you can kind of move it around if you need to um, after you stick them down. So I'm just going to add that on there. And like I said, I, I, use, I cut out five of these. So we have a total of five. And I just overlapped them just a little to cover up that, that band right there, just like that. that band up whoops already coming on I might have to put more on the base here and the other thing with the Mod Podge it, it really it's a it's very messy that's another thing you guys you might be peeling glue off your fingers um, for the day <laughs> I know I had to, I was picking at glue, even though I washed my hands, it's still, it was still kind of sticky. I've been painting already this morning, so you can tell I got paint already all over me, but that's okay. It's part of being creative, it's being messy, right? So, let's see where we end up. Okay, we might have just a little bit overage, which is fine. So what I might do, just since our crown is a little too big, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut it. I know. <gasps> Gasp. And I'm just going to add a little bit more glue on the inside and pop it in and make it smaller. Like that. I don't, I didn't actually, I know, I apologize if you guys are really big into having the perfect measurements. I'm always such an eyeballer. But see how easy it is to fix the problem. <laughs> Should be having just like that. Okay. Perfect. So I'm just still squishing down around the edges here. And add a little bit more glue on that side. Oops. And then you have your little crown. So I'm going to come in here and put a layer of Mod Podge on here. And then I'll show you kind of how I'm going to shape it after that. So with the Mod Podge, I'm going to go ahead and just use this surface. So if I get it messy, my whole desk isn't a mess. I use this and I also use matte medium. But regular Mod Podge would work fine on this project because it's going to be, I don't have it going in books or anything like that. But these are the two that I use. Um, this is one that I use on a lot of my artwork and canvases, but I love this other one too because it's not as thick and so um, it's easy to maneuver with things. That glue right there, I left the lid off so it is like kind of yucky. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to pour any out, I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in and... Um, and use it that way. Okay, 
so I'm just going to dip in here. Whoops, I got it all over. And I'm just going to put a little generous amount on, on the outside. And this is basically just kind of sealing it in. And the reason I'm doing that is because you saw those little edges. See, like that's coming up. And that just kind of, I can hold it down while I paint over it. And it just seems like it just gives it a little bit more um, secure on there. Now, if you don't have Mod Podge, just you could use, um, I really feel like you could use watered-down glue, Elmer's glue, to be honest with you. Because this, this is going to be a project that's just kind of um, just hanging and sitting out. It's not, to me, it's not like an archival project, I guess, so to speak, like I would in my journals and stuff like that. Because those are stuff that I want to have around. Not that I don't want to have my crown around, but... This is more for like fun, decorative fun. Okay, so once you have that on there, this is where I'm going to kind of take my crown and shape it a little bit. So I have it like that, and I'm just going to come down and kind of turn these down and just roll them over a little bit. And with that Mod Podge, it will keep that shape. Because you're kind of making the crown a little bit moist. That paper moist. And so that way it gives it that more. And then once you put the pipe cleaners, it's it's golden. It's going to really stick. So, Okay, so let's let that dry. And then we're going to come back and add a layer of paint. So get your paint picked out, which you'd like to have. and um, And that will be our next step. Let me show you real quick from a side profile since I was kind of straight down, but that's kind of how it looks there. All right, you guys, so the next step is going to be painting um, your crown. So as you can see, it's adding the little bit of Mod Podge kept the shape of the crown go uh, flipping down the, the crown tips. And so what I like to do on my, um, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of dilute the paint. And so I'm going to just take a, let's see here, a light pink. You can do whatever color um, you want for your crown. And I'm going to just add a little bit in my bowl here. We're not going to be painting a whole lot, so we don't need a whole lot of paint. And then I'm going to dilute it with some water. So I always kind of keep a spray water on my desk here. And then I take a brush, kind of a loose, loose little brush here, and I'm just going to paint. And actually I want to dilute it a little bit more because I really want those, the paper, especially if you're using like dictionary paper and stuff like that, you really want the print to show underneath. Now another thing you can do is once you paint, you can tap it with um, a paper towel. Oops, dropped it in the paint. That is okay. <laughs> and so I'm just going to, and again, this, this is where your hands are going to get messy as well because you are busy painting your crown. So that we're going to do this and then we're going to let it set. So that's an, that's your next step in the processes. And then while it's drying, you're going to want to gather uh, your supplies. Like I mentioned on the list, we're going to be using a um, we're going to be using a crocodile, which if you have a hole punch, um, that should work too, but or you can actually use like a an, an awl or even a exacto knife anything that's going to be able to pierce the sides here if you're going to be hanging your crown and the other um so you're you'll need that you'll need embellishment so i'm going to be i have gathered like ribbon and some some lace and some pom-poms anything that you're going to want to decorate the outside with and then let's see here then you're going to want to have 
uh, flowers. So, because I, what I did with mine is um, I didn't go and buy any flowers. I basically took flowers that I had and I painted them. So that way, um, if you don't have exactly the colors that you're looking for, keep that in mind that we can always paint the flowers. So do flowers and ribbon. And then for if you want to just have ribbon that hangs instead of the beads, you can definitely do that. But if you want to have beads, you want to be able to have those as well. Um, I've been debating. I don't know if I'll be putting beads on this particular one, but I will definitely be talking about how to do that and, and get that hung. So, so there we have our pink base with some of our paper shining through. You can just kind of gum up and, and prepare it. And then we're going to set this aside and we're going to let that dry. All right, you guys. So I added my um, little pipe cleaners on the end. And then I went ahead and started doing my ribbon. And the reason I wanted to do that was because I wanted to kind of show you my final, um, the final one to show you how I tie it. Now at this point, what I did on this one is I actually used cord, this um, braiding cord and I did the same thing I did here I just tied a double knot I I strung the cord on the outside and tied a double knot on the inside and then I strung it with beads and then at the very end of this so you have your crown and then you come down on the very end of this it's actually just tied together making sure that it's the same so it it um, when you hang it won't be wonky and so, and then I just put some tulle and some pretty uh, ribbon at the top, and that way when it, hang, when it hangs, it hangs just pretty, and that ribbon is coming down. Now, with, I did add this pretty little confetti tulle on there as well, and actually after I did it, I thought it might have been a little bit too much. Is there ever too much? <laughs> but <laughs> I thought, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But that's okay. It's already glued on. I love it. I'm going to hang it. And like I said, this one I kind of did a little bit shorter because I'm going to be hanging it on my tree. Um, but I don't need, but I don't really um, need that long. And I'm not going to put any beads on it. I just thought I would put this ribbon. So basically when I'm dealing with ribbon, I just kind of cut it at a slant where it's kind of pointed on one end and then I just came through here and stuck it through the hole. This one's kind of double so it's going to be kind of tricky to get it through there. Um, and then just pulled it through and did like a double knot. Now if it doesn't want to go through, you get a little pencil with a sharp point and you push that baby through <laughs> like that until it comes out. You can also like, I guess have like a needle and string it, but that, that works easy. When you're messing with the cord, it's a lot easier versus the thicker ribbon. And I just tie a knot, trim this up a tad, and then pull it through. And then this is where it kind of takes a little bit of preciseness just so you know your crown is going to float there even Steven like that oops sorry my hands in the way just like that so what I'm gonna do is just tie the end here and this is where you can actually get creative as well you can add tool at the top like I did in that one um, or if you could bring in maybe some more color here at the top, like maybe a bow, that would be that would be fun too. Ta-da! Got your little hanging crown. It's so cute. So coming in here, I opened my colors all up, and I'm just going to show y'all how quick and easy I do this. So I actually will pull out my five, because I'm, I'm not going to worry about cleaning my paintbrushes in between, because you use such little paint on each one that this is pretty darn easy. So no rocket science here. And I just, 
basically what I do is I don't necessarily feel like I have to cover the whole flower. There's some glue on that end. But I'll just go like this where it kind of just dabs it a little bit. And that way, and you can cover it as much as you want. I just kind of keep mine, you know, nothing. Because you can tell even, oh, excuse me, on this one, I did the same thing. I kind of just dab the paint on there as well. And it just kind of adds, it just kind of brings it all together as well with the, with the colors of what you used. And that way you're not going out and spending a lot of money on uh flowers either you're just you're substituting because i know these little cute little babies can get expensive um unless you know unless they're on sale but i know some of the ones that i just love i'm always like oh gosh they're ex not these little guys but the bigger flowers did i just call these flowers babies i think i just did <laughs> It's really late at night, you guys. I was wrapping up this video, and so <laughs> you just have to... Maybe they are little baby flowers. Okay. And now, for the magic, you get your sparkle. And I really just added my sparkle everywhere. So I get another paintbrush. And this is called Glitterific, and they're $4.99 at Hobby Lobby. I think they're about the same price at... Um, Walmart too but they are great they give you the luxury of the fun of having glitter without all the mess so I'm just going to come through and add it directly on this pom-pom ribbon whoops like so and now I put a lot because it I think they're so pretty when you have things sparkle. And finishing it up over here. And, you, and the thing with glitter, I mean with the sparkle, you don't have to be precise or anything like that. And then I may even add some to my ribbon over here. Get a little bit on that blue and then this actually doesn't take that long to dry but there and then actually what I might do is after the paint dries like I think this blue may be the blue is pretty good but I'm oh no it's not maybe the green but I'll just kind of come in here oops that's a lot of a lot of sparkle on the end of that and just add sparkle onto them just to kind of give it for me to get a completed look at the gold flex in that that's so pretty give it that completed sparkle look because that paint can be kind of a dull I mean I thought it looked dull see how it looks the pink is just kind of bleh. but I'm gonna add just a little bit of sparkle Alright, there you have it. And I, whoops, oh, yeah, and I'm gonna hang it like this until it dries. Let's do a backup. Let's get me back this up a little bit here. There you have your little sparkle crown, and you can hang it. You can hang things down from it. Um, Maybe not too heavy, but maybe some little charms or something like that would be cute. All right, you guys, have fun making your magical crowns. All right, you guys, so we are back. I've got my hot glue gun uh, heated up, and then we've got our painted crown. So in this particular crown that I created, I actually used some, this is called some eyelash ribbon and they used to sell it at um, Hobby Lobby like crazy but 
they I haven't seen it, it was actually in their bolt section but um, I haven't really dug for it but um, I didn't see it where I typically buy it and then um, let's see here so I did the flowers I talked about the flowers these are them so we're gonna add those and we're gonna paint them and so let's go ahead and get started so instead of doing the eyelash and it's gonna be um, we're gonna do kind of a different color scheme as well on this one but keep in mind this is where lots of the fun you can decorate it however you wish but I'm going to add lace to the, the base and then I'm going to put these cute colorful pom-poms on them. I think it will really stand out on that white tree. I actually bought these. I bought, I mean, I went crazy when I bought them. They were at uh, Walmart in the um, crafting section and they're really inexpensive. And this is where you're going to have to or I'm going to have to be really careful because I know that hot glue will seep through that lace. But they had just, I, I love colors, so of course it caught my eye. And then this last time I went in there, they actually had, it wasn't, they didn't have greens. It was more of a pastel candy color, and that was really fun. So I've used a lot of that. So it doesn't take much. I'm just going to trim that off there. Now with this lace being so tall, I may go ahead and come in here and punch my holes for for when I do my my hang my little hanger um, thing, the hanger thingies, my little. <laughs> My little hanger um, ribbon, my twine, my, let's see if I can, this stuff, my cord here that I'm going to be using. So, now I have a crocodile, a uh, crocodile, so this is like heavy duty. It will definitely uh, punch through just about anything, um, you know, heavy cardstock and chipboard and things like that. But you can actually uh, use an X-Acto knife or anything that's going to create a hole. And the the interesting thing about this project is that you, you fill it up so much that you really don't see, um, like once you punch your hole, you don't see it because it's kind of hidden. So basically what I did was I just punched in, oh, I went this way. I went from the bottom up and I punched it right where I'd be able to do the exact same on each one meaning I didn't have to measure it so I kind of just stuck my end to that so I think I'm gonna do let's see here this I think I did like every one I did two and then I'm counting the little crown peaks between the actual I think I'll do one right here on this side. Okay. So that way I go ahead and have those available. Now I was thinking about this while I was waiting my, for mine to dry. Instead of doing beads, I think I'm going to do lace ribbon on these. Um, so, I'm just thinking out loud here if I should go ahead and string those. I think we'll be okay. Let's give it a try. We can work around it and pull things apart and, and those kind of things. So, so I'm just going to start here. And I'm going to hopefully that each one of these will hit below that, um, that punch. Now you can also use other glue. This just kind of helps. It it actually does really. I use hot temp glue gun, so it actually does really good as far as um, sticking this together and not coming undone. But I've also used this um, 
fabric fix which I love as well and it's fast drying and it and it does grabs pretty quickly too but I'm just using my hot glue gun for for purposes that this way it will go by it can it'll be able to go by fairly quickly where I can move on to the next step yay lucky we, we didn't have a pom-pom that went in front of that hole and we're not gonna have a pom-pom that goes in front of that one so that worked out perfect I was worried about the pom-poms covering up the, the hole, but I think I would have been able to work around it even if it did. Now, it it's been working with such a small space. I think I'm going to do like a double. Let me see what if it if it changes the colors. Because I really would like, my tree's a lot of pink in it. has a lot of pink on there, so I think I really want to kind of add some pink, which I should have probably measured that out a little bit, but we're doing fine. So I'm just going to cut that extra off, and then just go through and fill this in in between. Now you see the pom-pom's going to cover that hole, but... It actually was going to work out just fine because I can move it out of the way when I'm ready to put my ribbon on. Oops. I actually need to move it down. I'm going to hit those every other one in between. So double layer it up, but it'll look good with filling in those that space that's in between these, these pom-poms. Ooh, ouchies, hot, hot. Stringy glue. <laughs> that drives me crazy. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry. This is where you could put tool if you wanted. Um, you don't have to add any color at all. I think these would be really pretty as a shabby chic. You know, with creams and whites. And roses, I think that would be really pretty. There's that big clump of hot glue. I'm gonna wrap it around there. Eek. There we go. Alrighty. Isn't that cute? Looks cute so far just like that. Wouldn't it be fun to have at a birthday party? Um, even somehow if you could put a base, if you had like a, put a base and add candy in there, that would be cute too. There's so many fun things you can do with little crafty projects like this. Okay. So at this point, I wanna go ahead and add the flowers. And I think what I'm going to do is add all the paint, and of course I'm going to have to add glitter. You know we need to add some glitter on here. So I think I'm going to do all that at the very end, so that way it has time to, to dry, and I can just set it aside. So that's five. And I'm just going to put the, actually, yeah, I'm just going to put these right on the center of my um, crown just like that and probably what I'll do is kind of come in here and paint them there's five colors so I'll probably do like a blue a pink a purple a green and a yellow kind of to match the the pom-poms on here Next step is to add your um, pipe cleaners. Now I think what I did, I don't think I did hot glue gun with these. I really don't. So I'm going to set my hot glue gun aside. And I think I used this fabric fixed. 
because I remember touching it and making my hands really sticky with it. And the hot glue would not do that. It would burn the Dickens. <laughs> so, pretty much, it takes about three pipe cleaners. And I just kind of came in here. Looks like this lace is going to be a little bit tall on there. I'm just going to squish it down in there. And then, let me show you what we'll do. Let's just get this going here. So I'm just going to add this on the edging of it. And I know it's going to go down into the lace, but oops, I kind of went a little crazy with it. It dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it if you make too big of a mess. But I'm just going to just bend it like that and squish that down in to the glue. And then this is where I use, um, I don't like to use my scissors on that, so I got my little wire cutters out and I'm just going to nip this right here and slide that inside see it's already it's already pretty much stuck to that top whoops that lace is kind of challenging to tuck in there So we're going to just cut this off since it's not going to go down in that lace part. And I don't think you're going to be able to see. So I'm just going to, I thought I could tuck it in like I did the other one. And this is where it's really going to allow you to bend that crown piece. Let's try this side. See how this glue, it's really crazy. It starts bubbling out. Ooh, it's without permission. <laughs> I don't know if it gets that, an air bubble in there. Let's see. Even if I just kind of was able to tuck it just underneath that lace, it would be helpful. Like I said, this is where your hands are going to get pretty messy, pretty sticky. Okay, so let's finish adding um, the sparkly tinsel pipe cleaners onto our crown.